G'day, and welcome to the AOS Coach sneak peek into the Arcane Cataclysm battle box between the Lumineth Realm Lords and the Disciples of Zench. Now, Games Workshop were kind enough to send me a copy in advance, but they won't see this video before it goes live. In this video, I'm going to highlight the Zench updates that are featured in this battle box, which includes an updated Cursling hero, as well as show off the new points. Inside the box, you will get 34 Zench models, which includes the Cursling, the updated Eye of Zench. You will also get 3 Zangor Enlightened on disc, 20 Karak Acolytes, and 10 Zangors. On the other side, for the Lumineth, you will also get a brand new sculpt, the Sonari Enlightener, as well as 5 Venari Blade Lords, 5 Venari Dawn Riders, and 10 Venari Sentinels. We know there's one constant thing in life, and that is change, so let us look at the gifts that Zench has provided to us. Unlike the Scenario Enlightener, your new Cursling hero isn't a new unit to your faction, however it is an update to an existing sculpt. There is an improvement on the base save, so it's now a 3-up save, while the movement, bravery, wounds all remain the same. It did gain a missile weapon attack, the Hurled Arcane Energy, which is a range of 18 with 3 attacks, hitting on 3s, wounding on 3s, has a Ren minus 1 for 1 damage. We also saw some improvements when it came to the Blazing Swords and the Staff of Zench attacks. The sword now wounds on a 3 and it does 2 damage. The Staff is more consistent now with 3 attacks hitting on 4s, but the range did go down to range 1, it used to be range 2, and it's now doing a flat 1 damage as opposed to a D3 damage. It did appear to lose the Threshing Flail attack, uh, as well as the Vessel of Chaos ability, which used to allow you to cast your enemy spells if it was successfully unbound. It's still a wizard, but it can only cast one spell and unbind one spell, and the previous version of this War Scroll was a double caster, though the Disruptor of Arcane ability does remain unchanged. Glean Magic has changed, it used to be a spell, now it's an ability, and if you don't remember what Glean Magic is, at the start of the hero phase you can pick one enemy wizard within 18 inches and roll a dice. On a 4-up, this unit can cast one extra spell in that hero phase, but more importantly, the enemy wizard can attempt to cast one less spell in your opponent's next hero phase. I love that. Finally, you've gained a spell which is called Barrier of Fate, which has a casting value of 4 and a range of 9. If successfully cast, pick one friendly Arcanite unit wholly within range and visible to the caster. And until the start of your next hero phase, you get a 6-up ward. The Cursling wasn't quite a popular choice in the last Zench Battle Tome, and I don't think the changes here alone are going to get me to swap out a Lord of Change or even any of the other sub-commander choices available in the Battle Tome. It's a great model, it's been updated, which I believe it used to be a resin sculpt. I really like this new sculpt. It does have some good abilities, but the way you're playing with it is definitely different to what you traditionally have. A lot of your Zench heroes in the past will castle up, they'll throw spells out at range, you know, 24, 30 inches, use things like cogs or spell portal or different ways to kind of get to your opponent. This is a type of model with its high armor save, uh, its ability to buff at short range, especially if you're building around Arcanites. Between the re-rolls to unbinding and dispelling rolls, getting the ward to Arcanites, being able to debuff your opponent's spell casting, I can definitely see uh, this being used in an Arcanite build, but I think ultimately for me, it's going to come down to in the new battle tome is mortals or demons or both of them or none of them. Where is the strength? Where is the strength and what needs to be buffed up and where's the benefit? Um, but hey, it's not bad having this in your rotation for as the meta kind of evolves. In the box, there is also Zangor Enlightened on disc. You've got your Karak Acolytes as well as Zangor on foot, which will all have updated rules that I will call out where I've noticed them. Starting off with the Zangor Enlightened on disc of Zench, we have seen a change in its save. It's now a 4-up, so it used to be a 5-up. It's now a 4-up base armor save, while the move, bravery, and wounds remain the same. There was no change to the Zenchian Spear, the Teeth and Horns, the Mounts, the Aviarch, or the Fly. Although the Vicious Beak has improved with an extra attack, so it's now two attacks each, and the profile has improved, so it now wounds on threes as opposed to wounding on fives. The big change came from the babbling streams of secrets. It's no longer a plus one to models fleeing from battle shock within nine inches. Instead, enemy units that are within three inches of a friendly unit with this ability cannot receive commands in the combat phase. So essentially, it is a raw monstrous reaction, 
without making a dice roll and without being a monster but also if you happen to have a monster in your army it does allow you to do the raw monstrous rampage in addition to this as well so great way of shutting out all out attack or all out defense or a faction based command ability in the combat phase it's not going to shut off other phases guided by the past has also changed although we kind of expected to lose any of the re-rolls because that is a trait that is being removed from the game instead of being re-roll hits and re-roll wounds it's now add one to the wound roll for attacks made by melee weapons by friendly units with this ability if they've taken the second turn in the current battle round uh, this ability doesn't affect the mount so it is reliant on you going second in the turn so uh, obviously, if you go first in the battle round, it means you don't get this benefit. There's a lot to unpack here when it comes to the Enlightened. I think you'll be happy overall with the statistics improvements um, that I've mentioned already. The save going up, the extra attacks with the beaks. It's easier to do wounds. But I'm sure you'll also be unhappy by losing the rerolls to the hits and wounds. So I guess you got some things, you lost some things. It all kind of balances out, kind of. The big change here that I like is the babbling stream of secrets because traditionally, especially in a Zench faction, you don't have a lot of monsters and your monsters like your Kairos or your Lord of Change, you don't want them to be in combat. So now you've still got a opportunity to use the raw command without actually using the raw command. And as I mentioned, it's automatic as opposed to having to roll the dice for raw. Next up, we've got the Karak Acolytes, and their save went down from a 5 to a 6. So they've actually gotten a little bit worse when it comes to their armor save, although their move, bravery, and wounds remain the same. There was no apparent change when it comes to the Sorcerer's Bolt, the Cursed Blades or Glaives, the Vulture, or the Karak Adept. There was a change when it comes to the pair of Cursed Blades, so if you happen to have two swords as opposed to the Sword and Shield, instead of it being re-rolls to hits, you now essentially get plus one attack. So you're looking at two attacks with one inch range, hitting on fours, wounding on threes, no rend for one damage if you go the Cursed Blades. You've lost the Scroll of Dark Arts ability that used to give you plus one to your casting and unbinding, and in its place it's been replaced by the Scroll Holder, which uh, improves the rend characteristic for the Sorceress Bolt for this unit by one if you include any Scroll Holders. This unit is no longer a wizard and doesn't have access to Gestalt Sorcery anymore, which essentially did the same thing as the Scroll Holder ability, giving you Rend 1 on your Sorceress Bolt. The Arcanite Shield still gives you a 6-up ward, however, some of the additional text that used to be on the old War Scroll has just been removed. It's now a flat 6-up ward for models with the shield. Finally, you've got your Zangor host. Now their move, save, bravery, and wounds are unchanged. So is the standard bearer, the musician, the Zangor mutant, the Arcanite shield. We talked about that just literally seconds ago. They're all basically the same. Now you have got an improved great weapons attack. The great weapon now wounds on a three, the blades wound on a three, the beaks wound on a three. So there's a big change. I think the beaks were on like wounding on a five. Now they wound on three. So great success. The unit champion has improved from being plus one to hit to being plus one attack. The savagery unleashed rules have been removed. Destin Mayhem has changed and the trigger is now based on the charge instead of having this passive buff if you are within 12 inches of the hero. So the ruling now is you get to add one to the wound rolls for attacks made by melee weapons if this unit has made a charge move in the same turn. So I guess on one hand, it's it's you've got to be charging now. So if someone charges you, no buff. But at the same time, you don't need to be running a support hero to keep within that 12 inches to be providing the buff. So probably a better one, but you know, you you be the judge of that. The final change I noticed was in the ornate totems, which at the end of the combat phase, if this unit has any icon bearers, you get to pick one enemy unit within three inches and that's visible to them. And you get to roll a dice for each enemy wizard within 12 inches of it. And on a four up, it does D3 mortal wounds. At the back of the arcane cataclysm, there is a bunch of points for your new and updated war scrolls. When it comes to the Disciples of Zench, Cursling went down 5 points, so it's now 175 points and it does take up a leader slot. So it isn't unique, so you can take an artifact, you can take multiple Curslings if you'd like. Your Zangor host went up 25 points, so it's now 200 points for 10. Your Karak Acolytes remain at 120 for 10 models, and your Zangor Enlightened on Discs of Zench saw an increase of 35 points for 3. Uh, they're now 215 points for every three models. 
If you're new to the faction, this is a great way to get a heap of models and you're going to meet your battle line options simply by using this box. And if you're an existing Zench player, you might find that your collection has focused more on the demon side and could benefit more from the mortal side. The Curselings high save and various abilities may entice you to include this hero, especially if your force is getting into the thick of the battle and it's got a lot of short range stuff so you definitely can't be sitting at the back of the board in your little castle throwing spells using the Curseling. It definitely wants to be fighting at least in the middle of the table, buffing up your, your Arcanites and things like that. My favorite ability with the Curseling definitely would be Glean Magic and having the ability to just shut off one of my enemy wizard spells, being able to literally go, yep, you've got one less spell to cast, would be awesome considering that more lists are taking endless spells, so shutting off one chance potentially. Um, uh, there's a lot of single cast wizards, uh, a lot of lists that aren't taking as many heroes we used to see in the older edition. So removing one spell from an enemy in the upcoming hero phase uh, could be quite brutal when it comes to denying a critical spell or keeping an endless spell off the table for a little longer. I really like the idea of the Zengor Enlightened on disc with their high movement, their improved save and their melee profile, as well as the ability to shut down commands in the combat phase. The Acolytes and the Zengor Host are definitely decent battle line options, but ultimately the value is going to depend on the rest of the battle tome. So are there going to be sub-factions? Are there going to be additional synergies that you can build and make those Acolytes and those Zengor Hosts even better than they are? But hey, that's enough about me. Based on what I've shared with you so far when it comes to Zench, what are you thinking? And let me know in the comment section. Will you be adding a Curseling into your list? Will you be thinking about some of these builds? Do you like the mortals? Is it time to put the demons on the shelf for a little bit? What are you thinking so far? Let me know in the comment section. I'd be curious to hear from you. Thanks for hanging around until the end. I hope you enjoyed that video and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would love it if you pressed like on the video, as well as left me a comment to let me know what your thoughts are. The conversation will continue over on Discord and the link is down below in the video description. I want to give a massive shout out as well to the AOS Coach Patreons and YouTube members who are going in and the funds are supporting the channel and the growth that you're seeing here. So cheers, you're all bloody legends. And until next time, don't roll a one on a redeploy.